the truth is he he was a journalistic uh, giant, P- partly because he lived so long, but partly because he made such um, he created a certain kind of. Uh, broadcast journalism, a certain kind of interviewing style that people want to emulate. I want to be tough like Mike. Mm. I do. And I think he um, changed uh, the course of history by his probing investigative reports. I don't think we can let this broadcast go by without saying that he made an indelible mark on the country and on journalism. And then he stayed around long enough Morley, to make sure that we didn't deviate from the serious mm-hmm. path he had set us on. Well, I, I'd know? like to pick up on something that Liz said when she said that, you know, Mike, wasn't, Mike Wallace, when you went to work for him, wasn't the Mike Wallace that people think of today. And I think at some point, Mike created a hard-nosed reporter called Mike Wallace. Mm-hmm. And exactly. then he became Mike Wallace. Oh, that's great. And, yeah. um, and I don't in any way mean... It's an act. Of course, there was performance involved with Mike, as there is with all of us. But uh, Mike more. happened to be a better performer than most of us. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but you know, he, I'm sorry to what, interrupt you. His son Chris was quoted as saying that so, the same idea, but that it was when his son Peter died in Greece that Mike decided he was just going to devote himself full time to this and make this creature, the Mike Wallace. You know, Count for something, yeah. really. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. Do you think that's right, Morley? It was absolutely. That, was that the well, point? he came to Dick Salant, who was then president of CBS News in 1963. Um, was that when the boy died? No. Well, see, well it was, I think it was a little earlier, but 63 yeah, was when he, he came to work for 1954, CBS. 1954, I think. Uh, no, 60-something. Really? 60 60, 60, 60. It was 54, 62. Or 62 it was the early 60s yeah. when he died. B- yeah. But um, he came to Dick Salant and essentially said he wanted why well, he wanted to be a serious journalist. And Mike, he, he began on what was then the CBS Morning News, and one thing led to another, and he proved himself. He proved very quickly how good he really was. Mike, at the same time, was very self-conscious about the fact that he had never had the kind of had paid his dues as a young cub reporter, as most of us have done. Mm, yeah. uh, and s- that, that made him determined to, every day, show just how good he could be. And it was, it was it, his brilliance as a performer, but even more important, the homework he did going into oh, yeah. every story. You know, Morley, I, I once took over uh, an interview he couldn't do. It was with Boris Yeltsin. And he handed me a yellow pad. And it was the interview he would have done, handwritten, crossings out, re-questioning, um, a whole strategy on how to start soft, and get harder and harder, and ensnare the guy. It was, it was just what you're saying. You could see he did it all himself. Well, you know, there, there were, as there are, I think, with all of us, two Mike Wallaces. There was the Mike Malice, as they called him. Right. <laughs> Mike Malice. In the 60s, well, you know, uh, after- 70s. And, and uh, the, other, the other guy, the, the real one, perhaps. Yeah. After uh, he did that night beat thing, he, got, he saw that his attack mode in that worked. And he affected that for the rest of his life professionally. But I always, I mean, I always found him hopelessly romantic and naive about women. And he was a real family man in the end. He wanted your children, his children, Mary Wallace's children. He wanted them wife. all around. Yeah. You know, that uh, I, you talk about how he changed when he got to CBS, but I saw an interview he did, Liz, in the 50s, with Eleanor Roosevelt, oh, who was yeah, right. the hero of yeah. all hero yeah. heroines or whatever, and he just tore into her. I gasped when I saw that interview. There was nobody that man wouldn't go after. How did he tear into her, Liz? I've never seen well, that. I forget the question. I mean, I think he said, well, you know, there were people... Well, he said, you know, everybody hates yeah. your yeah, husband. That was it. And, and no, a few you of them too. don't like you either, or yeah. something to that effect. Yes, but but I... we had always had Mrs. Roosevelt come on 
the Mike and Buff show in 1953. She was a she adored him. She was as good a performer as as he was. That's true. Uh, <laughs> in the sense that that she handled that question with such grace and elegance. She did, but the question follow? was so Mike Wallace going back there. But remember that when he when he had Mrs. Reagan on, his very good friend, and asked oh, the question yes. about the two million dollar trip. Oh yeah, yeah. in Iran Contra, he and asked she her said about. To him, she let him have to, it. You didn't need to ask that question. Oh, and yeah, it was bitter. Well, but Mike, he, Mike's uh, way of getting out of out, out of that trap always was. People say, I'm not saying, but <laughs> yes, people say. Right. <laughs> Forgive me, Nancy, <laughs> but, yes. but but he 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 did. He went, you said shameless. He was also fearless. He went after everybody. It didn't matter. It uh, didn't matter their station in life. It didn't matter uh, how close they were to him. He went after his bosses. I mean, the whole tobacco controversy was about Mike taking on the bosses at CBS. He relished that. And then he loved it. The rest of us would have been terrified. You know, I first met him during the Westmoreland mess, and wow. that was maybe a low, uh, maybe certainly one of the lowest points of his life, triggering that uh, the depression that he talked about and wrote about. Talk about that period, Morley. You were with him then. Oh, it was a very low point, and I think what Mike's when I talk about Mike being self-conscious and in maybe certain ways uncertain behind that facade of of certainty, uh, the Westmoreland trial. First of all, you're in an impossible situation when you're involved in something like a libel suit, because your lawyers will stop you from saying what you truly believe because you could get into deeper trouble. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, the opposition is is doing everything everything they can to discredit you, and you cannot answer. Mm. And I think Mike felt so vulnerable at that point yeah. when, the, when his integrity was being questioned, and he mm-hmm. felt that all of this work, all of this the efforts, these decades of proving himself, had come to this, he got very, very down and very low. And we talk about this in, you, you in, asked in detail. Him. In you, detail, you'll see Morley on, on the asks broadcast. Morley him. I, this was Sunday. a Mike Wallace question. Yes. Morley, wow. you, said you said to him, he said, you, I want to ask you how you felt asking this. You said, Mike, did you ever try to kill yourself? And he said yes. <gasps> and no one had ever asked Mike that before. That was brave of you. He well, said that uh, if you... All depressed people con- contemplate suicide. Did you know he said that? Yes. Well, well, I think when, what happened, uh, thank goodness Mary was there. and, and His and, wife. And yeah. he got, he was, his life was saved. Uh, and I think it was that experience uh, and and the fact that two of his closest friends, Bill Styron and, and, and Art Buckwald, also suffered from depression, convinced Mike to essentially come out with his depression. And he did and that some was of his great work after that.